First of all, before I'll start talking about ICA, I want to say that since I came to Dubai, and specifically to Basecamp, everybody is asking me if ICA is a meme coin, and also everybody is asking me about ICA-chan, and to tell you the truth, this is not what I do. I am not the Dijon side, I am more on the technical side. So let's talk about ICA, more from the technical side. It will be a bit different. I, I guess that some people here came to hear about the meme coin. Uh, but actually, I am coming from the technical side. I'm coming from cybersecurity and cryptography. Um, the whole team around ICA are all cybersecurity experts, cryptographers, uh, the top ones in the world, really world class. And this is really crucial for ICA, for the tech, and we will talk about it and why it's so important, the expertise, for the solution of FICA. Back. So the problem is interoperability. I know that everybody is talking about interoperability all the time in Web3, but to be honest, interoperability in Web3 today is broken. Uh, you can look on all of the existing solutions, and you can check all the problems that they have. But at the end of the day, interoperability is crucial. It's super important. We can't have a successful Web3. We can't have the world using Web3 and crypto without having the real solution for interoperability, something that you can really rely on and that really works from the standpoint of security, of scale, or any other uh, part that is really important for the industry and specifically for institutions and other participants that wants to come and join. So let's dive a bit into the problem. The first issue that we have in, with interoperability is the speed. It's very, very slow. Uh, most of the solutions that we have are not fast. You have to wait. The latency is very, very slow. And the most important part is the throughput. You can't really have a lot of interactions with those solutions. And we'll talk about specifically about how we solve that and how, how uh, ICA solve that. Um, but beside that, the scale is not just about throughput. Throughput is super important, but the other part is the scale of the committee, right? Who should I trust on? So although some of the solutions are just centralized, you know, like WBTC, um, and in that case, it's not even important, but if you have a solution that claims to be decentralized or even distributed or federated, what you have today, it's very low compared to the requirement that you have from, from blockchains, right? If you think about three, you have over 100 validators. And, and this is something that you want to have also from the interoperability solution. You don't want to reduce the security. You want to be decentralized at least the same way. And I think the third part, and this is something that people don't talk about because this is very cybersecurity focused, and it requires really to, to have the expertise and to understand that. Uh, we call it in Web2, I'm coming from Web2 cybersecurity, we call it zero trust. So the idea that you know that the user, that the owner, actually decided to make the action. The problem that we have in, with all of the existing solutions is that actually as the user, so if I'm using a protocol, I'm using DeFi solution, it doesn't matter what I'm using, but if it's connected to some interoperability solution, at that point, I gave up my ownership. I'm not the owner of the asset anymore. I gave it to the third party, to the solution, to the bridge, you know, to the cross-chain messaging. It doesn't matter the specific solution. At the end of the day, in all of those cases, you are not the owner anymore. So what is our solution? We took it from Bitcoin, the knock, -knock right? The idea that not your keys, not your coins. Uh, but the idea is, first of all, to solve the, the, I call it the basic problems, which is the, the, the speed, right? To make sure that you can at least get to, you know, the hundreds of thousands of, of, trans of signatures in our case per second, but you can think about it as actions that you do um, multi-chain. Um, and to do that with a very large committee. So in our case, ICA can support hundreds to thousands of validators that running the MPC or doing it together. So in, in terms of trust, you can rely on a very large set uh, of a committee. 
Uh, but beside that, and this is like super important part, we have the, the security aspect. And ICA is the first and the only solution that brings zero trust security to Web3, to interoperability. That means that you can use protocols that, uh, of course, they need to be built on top of ICA. The their difference is that you don't have to give the ownership at any point of that time. So that means that the whole time, the owner of the asset, the owner of the native token, so if I'm talking about BDC, for example, I am still the owner. What that practically mean, I'll talk about it soon, when we will get into the, the deep dive of how we do it. But I think the important part is just to think about it as a way to treat the accounts on different chains as assets. So it means that the account now is programmable, the account is transferable, so I can control the account on Bitcoin, I can control the account on Ethereum, on Solana, and I can do all of that from Sui. So what's the use cases? The, the first, and I think this is super important, and people don't talk about it enough in Web3, is institutions. Without institutions, we won't move to the next phase of Web3, and for having institutions, we have to give them what they need what they need from security perspective. And this is super important And when it comes to zero trust and to have a very large scale of committee. This is exactly what we have to have in order to have institutions coming and using DeFi on Web3. For DeFi and to have interoperability with DeFi, we have to have fast interoperability. We have to have sub-second. And by the way, when you combine that with SWE, it's the perfect match. Um, I think SWE for ICA is a super important component, specifically to, to the speed part. Um, we have the aspect of programmable Bitcoin. So we know that there is a lot of projects today, you know, Bitcoin L2s and other solutions to claim to eventually, in theory, get to a solution that you do stuff on the native assets. Um, the problem is that practically none of them do it today. ICA is the first solution to bring that today. So today, you can program native Bitcoin from SWE. From the custody side, today you have to choose. You have the solutions, the custody solutions that are centralized. If you think about Fireblocks, for example, so you get from them uh, the security. The, I, I would say the zero trust security because you have to approve everything and you're part of, of their MPC, but it's not decentralized. And if you choose solutions like Gnosis Safe, for example, then it's decentralized because it lives on, on Ethereum, but then it's one chain. It's not interoperable and you can, can't really use it wherever you want. With Ica, you can combine both. You can do all of that from the same place. Uh, chain abstraction, I think from API perspective and interface, we have many good solutions. The issue is Underwood. It's the underlying technology that doesn't really provide what you need. So even if the interface is great, you also need the tech to be great. And it can bring great tech, so now chain abstraction will be super uh, fast and secure and not just simple. And about AIs, AIs for Web3, for crypto, is also a very important part, a, a very important component. The issue with AI is that you give the AI unchecked power, so the AI can do stuff, can trade for you, and I think this is the future of DeFi, but you have to have a way to put guardrails for, for the AI, to put policy, and this is what you can do with Ica. For the first time, you'll be able to write policy on SWE to, to say what is the guardrail for you, for your AI agent. So the way that we do everything is on SWE, and this is why ICA loves SWE. Um, ICA is coordinated on SWE, which means that everything that you do um, from the perspective of the builder, but also from the perspective of the network. So every, every action is, goes through SWE, back and forth, read and write. And this is something that is very similar to Walrus. So ju we just had uh, George talking about Walrus, so it's very similar. We're using SWE as the coordination layer. So you can think about Walrus as storage uh, that coordinated on SWE. ICA is interoperability that coordinated on SWE. Also, from the builder perspective, the way to use ICA to write the policy, to control everything, is from SWE as uh, 
the, the smart contract engine also for ICA. And also from the community side, uh, I would say that SWE loves ICA and we feel that love. And we feel that we have a great community inside this amazing ecosystem of Swiss. So we are really excited and really happy about all of that. So let's start with more of how we do it in the technical part. We came up with a new uh, cryptographic scheme. We call it 2PC MPC. It took us almost two years to do it. Uh, we worked on that over a dozen cryptographers for a very long time. And that the idea was to combine two concepts that we have uh, with MPC. One concept is that you have a network, and you want that network to be decentralized for the MPC. So that means that you want a large committee to sign together the transaction. The issue is that if you just do that, which is super important, still, from the user perspective, the user have to give their ownership. So they are not controlling the assets anymore. And we wanted to combine that with the other part of the user participation, which is the 2PC. This is like Fireblocks, for example, so that the users sign together with Fireblocks. So we combine both. This is why we call it 2PC MPC. It's an MPC between user to ICA. And inside ICA, we have a nested MPC between the validators. So from the user perspective, it's like doing an MPC with one party, right? But the user has the control because the user needs to sign every transaction, every action. And from the network perspective, actually, we need two thirds of the participants. And we're talking about over hundreds of participants that we're going to have right now in the testnet, in testnet 2, and with mainnet. And in theory, it can scale to even 1,000. I think if you think about it from the perspective of the existing solutions, you can think about it as a legacy MPC, right? So you have the legacy of the 2PC, you have the legacy of the network MPC, and we combine them both to be decentralized and zero trust at the same time. The second part, and this is a very important concept, is the concept of a D wallet. So we can think about a D wallet as the implementation of 2PC MPC on ICA. This is an object that lives in SWE. Whenever you want to start using ICA, you have to first of all create a new D wallet. And then from that D wallet, you hold the cap of the D wallet, and then you can control what can be signed with the D wallet using that cap. So that means that basically you can do whatever you want on any chain because we support ECDSA signature, EDDSA, Schnorr. So that basically means you can sign transactions on any other chain. You can write whatever logic you want on SWE. And you, combine, you can combine that with any other protocol. So you can literally do whatever you want on any other chain. Okay. A simple way to think about it, because it's a new concept, and most of the time people are getting confused what exactly that means. You can think about a D wallet as an account on every other, other uh, network. So you have an address for a D wallet on Bitcoin, and you have an address on Ethereum, and you have an address on Arbitrum, po uh, Polygon, Solana, uh, you name it, really whatever you want. You can choose the right uh, signing algorithms based on the use case and also the chain, because different chains support different uh, signing algorithms. And then you can really do whatever you want. Because if you can think about it as an account and you can transfer the D wallet, that means actually the wallets are transferable. So that means you can transfer the whole account. So you can create an account that holds assets on different chains and then you can trade it, right? So it also opens up really new variety of use cases that you can't even do with the existing interoperability. So besides of solving the, the basic, the crucial aspects of security and scalability, you also have new use cases that you can't do with the existing solutions. Yeah. So why to build uh, uh, with ICA? I think that the very simple answer is that you have unlimited access. You really can do whatever you want on any chain. And if you think about SWE as a coordination layer, right? So SWE, that means that SWE becomes a coordination layer to any chain, right? Now you have unlimited liquidity as well, because you can bring all the liquidity of Bitcoin. You have two, billion, two trillion, sorry, two trillion dollars of Bitcoin, of BTC, 
now on Swi, you can program, program it natively. And this is really different than Bridge or WBTC or any other solution. You can literally control the account on Bitcoin and do whatever you want with that. And you do all of that while keeping the user ownership all the time. And really, this is something that wasn't possible until today. Also, and in general, what we do is to turn smart contracts on SWE, move smart contracts, to make any account programmable. So it's not just Bitcoin. I know that we focus a lot on Bitcoin because we think it's super important. But you can think about any solutions between Ethereum and Bitcoin and, and Solana. And, and you can really program whatever you want. It's Turing complete. You can write whatever logic you want. Um, also, you have the part of the different type of signing algorithms. And this is also an issue that you have with many of the existing solutions, that they are really limited to one specific signing algorithms or to specific type of uh, chains because they need smart contracts or EVM, like uh, cross-chain uh, messaging, for example. In our case, it doesn't matter. It's universal. We can generate transactions to any chain, to all of the top. Uh, the top three sign algorithm is uh, ECDSA, Schnorr, and, and EDDSA, and we will support, we'll support all of them. So that means you can really do whatever you want. And at the end of the day, you can think about it that from now on, you can build new protocols with no bridging, no wrapping, you all the native assets all the time, completely zero trust, completely scalable. So thank you, join the community. And people, just before I finish, people ask me all the, t uh, all the time about giving them an alpha. So I'm, I'm not a degen. What I can say is that this quarter, we're going live, live with Maynet. I don't know if it's an alpha, but thank you so much. <laughs>